Welcome to Kellis Coda and today we have a look at this lovely piece of history, the Microprofessor One Plus. So the Microprofessor One and the One Plus were basically teaching aids in colleges. It would teach you how to program Z80 Assembler because in the 80s and up to the mid 90s the Z80 was pretty much the workhorse of the embedded systems. We at school used the Microprofessor One, public schools, right, democratized country, so we don't have that much money to spend. And the difference is that you have a smaller keyboard that you can only enter hexadecimal characters and you had, I believe, four seven segment display. I came across this one on the Dutch Craigslist, Marktplatz, and I may have paid a bit too much for it, 160 euros, but it's a nostalgic rush and it came nicely boxed and not only the processor unit but also a printer unit and an EEPROM burner unit. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So let's open these up and see what they look like. These are the nice boxes. We have the printer, we have the EEPROM burner and of course the MPF1 Plus itself. Look at that packaging, it's really gorgeous. It's 80s chic, but gorgeous. Now this is the EEPROM burner. Even the booklet is there, that's really cool. So we have a nice sieve socket, some code on an EEPROM, and the connection cables. Yeah, it's looking complete. I have not yet used it. Now this is the printer, which is used to print out listings, for example, to make editing a bit easier. It is in superb quality and look at that. There is even a toilet roll for little garden gnomes in there. And of course the cable. And the main attraction, the microprofessor itself. Whoa, there are three books in here. I found out from experience that you actually have to read the user's manual, otherwise you don't know how to work it. That's what she said, but at least this comes with a manual. And the unit is packed in a nice plastic folder. This is actually what I could remember from college. An eye on the future. And this is an eye on the past, how ironic. The MPF1 Plus has a complete keyboard, unlike the MPF1, which only allowed entry of hexadecimal values. We have two A255s to drive the GPIO for keyboard and display, and then the trusted Z80, a MPF1 assembler, disassembler ROM, and some of these Darlington arrays. All the date codes are from 87, so this machine is from 8788. This is 2x2K RAM. And these chips contain 8 Darlington arrays which drive the display. And there's a lot of these chips here and there's a lot of elements on the display. And yeah, it works. It looks nice. I have to adjust the shutter speed to make it flash a little less. Then the books. Look at this. The monitoring program source listing. So all the source of the assembler and the monitor is there. That is really cool. And look at the documentation. This is how you need to write code, especially assembly code. Then the software experimental, which is a, a teaching guide, binary addition and subtraction. Really learn that people. Stack and subroutines, very, very important, especially in assembly. It's a really good book, I liked it. And this is the user manual. It's a thick book and I had to read it in order to know how to operate the line editor and the assembler. So we have a line assembler, in case your source code is too big. We have a two parts uh, assembler and of course the disassembler and the editor, which is a beast to use. But I guess it will suffice. I mean, with 4K, you can be picky, right? And then we have a battery backup for your RAM in case you're coding and you don't want to lose your progress. And those batteries are located on the bottom side with four AA batteries and a little speaker. 
it's really a nice nifty little piece of teaching aid. So now that we had a look at the hardware, let's create some code for it. What we will be doing is uh, writing a text to the screen and blinking it. And when it's off, it will generate a little beep from the speaker. I wrote the code up onto paper here because editing on these machines is very, very, very difficult. And uh, let's see if my code is correct. And you know me, I probably make a lot of typos as well. So let's jump in and have some fun. So first we need to start the editor, control E, and it will ask us where our source code starts. Since RAM starts at F00, I choose F00 and press enter for the default of the ending address. Then where we will assemble the code, FB00. Then I call 9B9 hex, which is a routine that clears the screen. After that, I will load HL with the pointer to my string that I want to display, which I call coder, that pointer. Then I load IX with 0FF2C, which basically is the translated codes that will be used to show information on the screen. So I can swap in a blank string and our coder string. Then I load HL with 6FD0. This is uh, 40 bytes, consecutive bytes, that are completely empty, filled with FFs to blank the screen. That is probably also what the 9B9 uses. Then I push that on the stack, so I can switch between the coder string and the blank string. Then I have a outer loop. I load B with 32, and then I call 029B, which is a non-blocking keyboard scan, which takes 19 milliseconds. So I basically wait 32 times 19 milliseconds. A chip timer. Then decrement jump not zero to loop two. So we're decrementing that B with the 32. And then I transfer the stack pointer, which now contains that blank, with the IX pointer, the screen memory. So basically swapping my string with blank and vice versa. Then I load the first character of that screen memory into A. So when that first character is not FF, we know Kellis Coder is showing, so then we shouldn't beep. And that is what we do here. Compare A with FF. Then we jump if zero to sound, because then Kellis Coder isn't showing, so then we want to beep. And otherwise we do a jump relative to loop one, the outer loop. Basically looping forever. So this is the label sound, and we load HL with 100 hex, which is the duration of the tone. And then we load C with the number 16, which is the pitch of the tone. And then we call 0874, which generates a tone on the speaker. And then we jump relative to loop one, and then we declare the label coder. Coder, oh you fucking useless git, who hired this wanker? Fire him, fire him now! So defm is define a macro, a string. And here I do also something very stupid. I put spaces in there, which breaks the code, which I found out later in the edit. But you will see that later on. Then I define a byte 0d, which is the carriage return and which is the marker for the call message that writes to the screen. End is the end marker for the assembler. And then we press Ctrl Q to go back in the monitor, then Ctrl A to go to the assembler. Where do we want to assemble it? FB00. Eh, the symbolic table, I just keep the defaults and I want my code to be generated in 00, of course. Also keep the defaults by pressing enter. And we have an error. We always have an error on line three. So I press Ctrl R, which goes into the editing. 
and type G3, which jumps to line 3. And here I see LDHL, coder, which should be correct. So what did I do wrong? Well, I spoiled it before. I typed coder wrong. I do U for going up, B for bottom, which is really weird. And then C to change. And this is very Unix-like. So the string you want to change between a slash and then the string you actually wanted to change with. And there we go, it's changed. So now it should compile. Control Q, Control A to go into the assembler. Still the same origin. I use the defaults for the symbolic table by pressing enter. Can I actually press enter here? Yeah, also, cool. Zero errors. Now G for go to. FB00, that should ruin the application. And it's beeping, but not showing anything. I press the reset, which stops the execution, but keeps the memory intact. Again, Ctrl R to edit, and I walk with Enter through the lines. This is the clear screen. Then I load the string for coder, and here I realized I don't call the subroutine that prints to the screen. So U for up, and then I for insert, and then I call 09CA, which is the display printing routine. So now you also know how this editor works. T for top, and here I run through the code again. Yes, I see it, and yes, the other statements are there. So now it should assemble perfectly well. Ctrl Q to go to the monitor, Ctrl A to go to the assembler, FB00, we know the drill. Enter, enter, enter. And then again, G to run the code at FB00. And there it goes. Nice, it's working, not really. So during the edit, I realized it was beeping every time, whether it was showing or not. And I figured, that is weird. This worked before when I did the dry run. What is going on? Well, during the filming, I decided to align the string callous coder to the center of the screen. And I'm still checking that first character if it is uh, FF. But even though a space is 32 in screen RAM, 32 means show nothing, so let all the cons uh, transistors conduct, which is FF. <laughs> so it would always evaluate. So I moved the string back to the beginning and then it actually beeps every other time. Never change your code when you're actually filming. When do I learn? <laughs> so there you have it. My first ever program on a MPF One Plus. Yes, we had the MPF-1 in college, but yeah, public schools, no plus money, right? <laughs> That's the problem with public schools. It is a cool little piece of kit, and it's really good to learn how to develop in Z80 Assembler. There are a lot of these very convenient functions already implemented, so you can do relatively complex things like writing to a screen or generating a tone by just setting a few registers and calling that subroutine. Yeah, it's really cool. I think we will actually have some more videos, explore the printer at some point and explore especially the EEPROM burner. It's very cool to be able to burn these small EEPROMs. So yeah, I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.